Which one? Huh? The long run or not? No, no, there is no long run for labor market. Though. Oh, labor market. Yeah. See this word? Like yeah. Labor, yeah. Just grab one of those sheets, please. Remember this, Patrick? Any idea? You know how to draw the industry part. Did you win yesterday, Ben? Uh, yes. Good. Now draw the label market. I gave you enough room to put it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. 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 I have no idea. Squirrel to doing camera. That's a picture worth. All right. Um, here's what it looks. Well, maybe. All right. It's um, the regular supply and demand wage and quantity in the industry. And then in the firm, it's a wage taker. So supply equals MRC really equals wage. So all three of them. And MRC is marginal resource cost, also could sometimes be called marginal factor cost. So it's the additional cost for an additional worker. And then you have downward sloping demand and MRP, which is marginal revenue product. And that's an additional revenue for an additional worker. Okay. And again, this is on tomorrow's quiz. It's posted, um, but there it is. Okay. Any, any questions on that? I'll leave it up there in case you want to put the right one down. Okay. Um, I don't think you'd have to really put SL, DL, SL, DL. But you would want to put MRC and MRC. Yes, can I help you? What? Yes, of course. Take one. <coughs> You're looking at like, that's how the people who come in and they were looking for the uh, bricks and meat. Should you guys sign in this up? Keep it every time. Okay, it's coming back. All right, let's go to um, first question. Multiple choice. I'll give you a minute. Oh, that's not. First is the graph, right? Yeah. There we go. Okay.
What? Yeah. MFC and MRC are are actually the same thing. What do we got here? Sorry. All right. Anyone feel good about the answer here? Go, Luca. All right. So, um, I got out of my control. All right. So, the um, profit maximizer would be um, MSC and it. Oh, great. This thing is exploded on my hand. So, oh, oh, my God. oh, that's Please. How did that happen? Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. okay. It seemed to have avoided me. That's good. I'll go on. <laughs> okay, profit maximizer, MRC uh, and MRP or MFC. So this should be MRP. Um, all right, but we take it, so that gives us the 10. Then we take it down um, to supply for the wage. And that would be C ten and twenty. Yes. Wait. So why do we do that? We go from MSC because it's a monopsony. So you take it down to the supply curve because you're paying. You could pay less because you're the only job in town. Okay. Now, if you remember, it's also like say um, they decided minimum wage was twenty dollars. You would take this across and it would be the only market where you would pay more okay because at twenty dollars no one's going to pay you can't pay less no one's going to pay their workers more because they really want to pay them 10. so therefore this becomes like the mrc and you take it till it either hits the supply or demand and it hits both here so you'd hire 14 workers yes so sir. what exactly is a marginal factor cost it's the additional cost for an additional worker. Okay. Okay. All right. So it looks like I have one notes in green. All right, next. Let's do the next one. Yes. Did you say labor market is always short run? Yeah. Okay. I mean that it yeah, we're not it's not like you're gonna shift to the long run, right? Okay. All right, anyone feel good about this? Oh, Sparrow, you pretty young man. Yes. Yeah, I'm definitely not, I definitely know this wrong, but uh, the B. You definitely know. <laughs> no. Anyone? Okay, MP. So, if marginal product is going up, it has an inverse of 
Well, actually, it's falling, right? So if, more, if we're becoming less productive, it's going to cost us more. March will cost us rising. So it'd be big. All right. So they have an inverse relationship between marginal product and marginal cost. And, and that would make sense, right? If you're less productive, you're more costly. D. That's question 58. So usually that's supposed to be hard. All right. At the current level, at its current employment level of labor and capital, the firm observes the following. Give you a minute um, to work it out. That's right. Right. You got the form. Come on. I forgot to do it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I got it. Yeah, light bulb. Let's turn up. Those of you who are not or are rusty on it, I put the formula up here that would help you get started. Did anyone not sign the sheet? Okay. Um, who's got this one? We stumped everyone. Yeah. Okay. Well, let, let's let's look at it. What is the marginal product of labor up there? Um, Nick, 30. 30 and the price 30. and the module product. Okay, so you now got 10 equals four, right? And if we're trying to maximize it um, at 10 equals four, which one of these would we want to? And this is so you want to increase labor, right? Why would you want to do that? I have the right idea, but Mitch, uh, by increasing labor, the MRP will go down and the, the MRP, the percentage of capital will go up. Yeah. As you increase labor, labor, the law of diminishing marginal productivity comes in. And that, so if I increase labor, the MP will go down. Okay. And then if I decrease capital, I'll get that in a second. The capital will go up. So B, as in broccoli, is the right answer. Always increase the bigger number and decrease the smaller number. And it's what I think it was Kyle who said it. When you increase the bigger number, the marginal product goes down. And when you decrease the smaller number, the marginal product goes up. Okay. All right. Quick definition question here.
Bro, you better get this. No, no, right. All right. Who's got this? Go ahead. It's C. It's the change in total resource cost caused by the addition of one more unit of resource. A, by the way, A, the change in total resource cost, that's marginal cost. Okay? This would, C would be marginal resource cost. Ooh. Okay, give you a minute on this one. Who's got, who's got this one? I said C. Yes. All right. Now, these are good distractor and a lot of, but it is the long run average total. This is a long run average total cost as output increases in the economies of scale, which is here, um, ATC goes down. Constant is output increasing and average total cost staying the same. And diseconomies is output increasing, average total cost increasing. All right. In diseconomies, a lot of time it's duplication of cost, it's theft, um, it's as your company's getting bigger. Economies, specialization. Okay. Any question on that one? For whatever reason, they do like asking about it. economies, diseconomies, and constant economies of scale. Okay, this is in your packet, right? Yes. Yeah. All right, can we just do um, A and B to start? So I'll give you like two or three minutes to do A and B.
Anyone for A? All right, so you're saying yeah, the first work of the module product is three minus zero is three. The second is seven minus three is four. So the module product goes up. 12 minus seven is five. We're still going up. Okay. And this is going down. 16 minus 12 is four. So just remember to find the module product, which is like seven minus three for four, 12 minus seven is five. So you go to four. I think the key is after. Sometimes they say at, sometimes they say after. So after the third worker, we went down to four. Okay. Now, assume that Bob's barbershop sells haircut services, a perfectly competitive market, a unit price of none. All right. They want you to figure out the MRP in perfect competition. MRP equals MP times P. So the sixth worker, the MP 21 minus 19 is two. And they said the haircuts are what, nine? So two times nine, the MRP is 18. And did they say show you work somewhere? All right, so you'd have to do MRP equals MP times P and plug in the two times nine, and you get the 18. Any questions on those two? All right, let's um, do C and let's do C and D. I'll give you a couple of minutes on those. Um, so if you just like, do you have to multiply it by the marginal utility, or can you, um, or the marginal return, or can you just multiply it by the by the total product per hour? I feel like that would be more than that. Like instead of doing nine times three, or like uh, for like two barbers, like instead of doing nine times four, do nine times seven. Like I feel like it would give you the same equity. Okay. You're never not going to, you're going to hire all the barber shows. Oh, no, I guess the, yeah, the number keeps on going. Yeah. 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 Yes, But that's the garage. So wages will go up.
Okay. Um, anyone want to want to walk us to see? Let's see that. Uh, I, like, I have all the numbers from the marginal, um, the marginal little pie per hour. So, how many workers did you hire? Five workers. Okay, you hired five. Yeah. Okay. How did you pick five? Um, because the wage is twenty five dollars an hour, so I just kept multiplying nine times whatever I got from the other number until I got more than um, twenty five. And as soon as I got eighteen, I stopped there. And that's okay. So you need MRP to equal MRP has to equal or be greater than MRC. MRC is the wage. So what CVS did is if you find the MRP for each one, the first one three times nine is twenty seven. Now. Sometimes the first ones could be under 25, but after that it picks up. You would just go forward. This one is 27, that's greater, 36. They're all greater than 25, so CBAS said, till you get um, to the sixth worker, he's bringing in 18, I don't want to pay him 25. Okay, so just remember, this is what each barber is bringing in. He brings in 27, I'll pay him. He brings in 36. 45, 36, and even the guy who brings in 27, I'm still making $2 a haircut for bringing him in. Okay, any questions on that one? All right, then assume there's an increase in the demand for haircut services. All right, so in the haircut industry, this is just the product market for haircuts, we're going to have an increase in demand for haircuts. If people want more haircuts, what are we going to need? More workers. Well, does anyone remember what that's called when the increase in the demand for haircuts leads to an increase in the demand for barbers? Derived demand, okay? Which, by the way, is another one of their favorites because people don't remember. So the der derived demand. So if I know now they need more barbers. The demand for barbers is going to go up. And since firms are wage takers, wages would go up. So how would I explain that? I would say wages increase due to the increase in derived demand for barbers driving up their wages. And I might even show the graph, you know, and just explain the graph. Any questions on that? All right, this last one to me is a little tricky. What's going to happen to the marginal revenue curve? So they're talking about the MRP curve here. Well, MRP, if you remember, is marginal product times price. What happens to the price of haircuts? It increases. So that means MRP increases <laughs> and it's going to shift out that way. Is your explanation just like the price increase? Yeah. I, I, uh, my explanation would be that MRP equals NP times P, the price of haircuts increase, therefore increasing the demand. How do you know the price? Because there's an increase in demand for haircuts, demand, right? <coughs> price goes up. You don't know what the price is, you know the price went up. Any other questions? Okay, I say 15, I say 15. Thank you. Have a great day. I will see you later. <laughs> Do you remember if there was one of the offices were on something? You got a question. I'm going to make it to you.
Yeah, let me just shut this down. Yes. Yeah, but you would have to, like, say 